Okay, so today I am in Star Sports' Mayfair VIP lounge in the betting shop there with Steve Cooling. Thank Steve, you. thanks very much for uh, coming in today. So you're an odds compiler, but currently head of trading and strategy <laughs> implementation at uh, TTP Trade the Prices. So what is Trade the Prices and yeah, what is it that you do? You've obviously done your homework, checking up on me. When I left Stan James or made redundant from Stan James, 2009, I, I did actually, it's a proper company, you can check it, Company's House, Trade the Prices was um, uh, a, a company set up to initially provide um, odds the, the day before for Hove Greyhounds, um, some football prices, um, there was a horse race section and a, a non-league football section and it was to, it was my way of, of trying to, to get some form of income um, basically because most of my work in life had been in, in the betting industry. I'm no good painting and decorating, car mechanic, electrician. Um, that was it. It, it didn't work out. Um, at, the, at the highest point, I think I have four people paying £99 a month for some Hove prices. And, it, you know, it, it, um, I have to say it didn't work. I, I put that on there on Twitter because, you know, whilst I, it's not officially a trading company, I've given myself that title. Yeah, so, but you still, uh, we'll come into, onto it in a bit, but you still put odds that you've compiled up for free for people to I see. I do, yeah, I do. Um, well, basically Swindon. I've been... Uh, Swindon <clears throat> Dogs, actually. Swindon Greyhounds, yeah, yeah. I've, I've always, I mean, I've been a massive Greyhound fan for, for, well, for years, really. Um, it's the, just about the nearest stretch, Swindon or Oxford. I've always been um, on and off uh, a Swindon regular. I've had dogs there um, and started going there just prior to lockdown with little grandson who um, he took an interest watching the greyhounds on television um, he's fascinated by the traps the hair the colors of the graphics and um, took him to a trial session on a Tuesday morning um, I thought there's no there's no betting there there's not not encouraging him to, to, to have a bet or anything and he just loved it. And he's been racing 20 odd times at Swindon. He's been to Toaster, been to Oxford. Um, he knows all the staff there. He'll, he'll quite happily, so that, you know, go and, and stay with the uh, track staff. That got me back into Swindon after about a gap of 12, 15 years. And I started pricing up the card the day before um, for, for my benefit for when I went to Swindon, and I would use it for, for betting, trading. I, I wanted to know the prices before I'd actually got there. I couldn't operate um, having seen prices. Um, I wanted my own opinion before ever, I, oh no, I got racing. Okay, now you're an odds compiler. I've been an odds compiler since the early 80s. Um, <clears throat> now, you've told me a lot about yourself. You've priced up horses, basketball, ice hockey, German ice hockey, basketball, greyhounds, callers in football matches, golf and football in running. Anything I missed? Um, probably not. I'm trying to think back. Probably not. I started 1980. I was, I was a Labrooks five and a half years. So we're 80 to 85. That was in, in a shop. Um, uh, local town, uh, first of all, then on relief, and then switched to Stan James in October 85. Um, and then... Gradually, as, as um, teletext and debit card betting and supplying other bookmakers with prices on the screens, that was down to, to my main role. And you sort of had to learn things pretty quickly. I was responsible for all the information that went on the screens out to independent bookmakers. Um, early prices on the horses, probably only five or six a day back in, in, in those days. Um, the speciality sports, um, it, it, was, it was pretty comprehensive. And then as, as a Stan James company, we were on Teletext. We looked to expand in, in all different ways. It was, yeah, let's just try it. I would say to Steve Fisher, I think we should bet on the British basketball. Um, I know a guy there that uh, does the commentaries for, for the matches. He's obviously basketball mad. I'm pretty happy with the way I can form handicap 
prizes similar to rugby league, um, which I used to do. I'd do my, my handicaps uh, down. I'd speak to a guy called Daniel at the uh, British Basketball. If I was London Towers against Leicester, if I was Leicester plus six points and he was seven, he said, I think, yes, he, he would give me his figures. I would go six. If he was 10, I'd probably go eight. And, and we were up and running. We were, we were probably, as a company, the first firm that would bet on those matches. There'd be a live match on Sky, which was fantastic um, interest. Anything live on Sky or live on TV was of, of massive interest. I mean, how did you, all right, you explained how you did that, but yeah. I mean, how did you get a handle on so many sports to the extent that you could take the punters on and beat them? Because <clears throat> there must have been punters out there that knew more than well, you. Well, when you think, going back, so we're going back to early 90s, late, well, early 90s, and you've got no internet, you've got teletext. Teletext was kind of the, 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 the first version of any kind of technology where people could get information. There was no, um, or very few forums, there was very few telegram groups advising you to do this, that and the other. You just had to, to the, to the best of your knowledge, you look on past results, past form, league tables, you would come up with a set of prices. I'd always try and get a, a, a three-runner event rather than a two-runner event. Obviously more, in theory, um, profit for, for the bookmaker. So we'd have a, an ice hockey match. Um, tended to handicap it so the, the underdogs would get a goal head start sometimes two and you'd, you'd just sort of through practice really and repetition. Where did you learn to compile odds? Well self-taught really. Um, it's, it's, it's like if you if you imagine you had to come up with some football prices um, the only information you got were previous odds so say, say, say you've got Man City against I don't know um, Man City against uh, Sheffield United, and you think Man City would be, I don't know, 16s on, 14s on, or something like that. And then Man City and Bournemouth, 10s on, 9s on, something like that, in that ballpark. You've got that as, uh, as part of your reference. If they played a team that were in the middle of that price range, that would be your starting point. And very quickly you build up, but you'd say, oh, this team would be this price against this team. You, there was nothing to tell you you were wrong. You didn't go and have to put them on a thing called odds checker because there was no such thing. Punters would tell you if you were wrong, wouldn't Oh, they, they would do, yeah. But, but, but how many punters would... You know, it's easy to do it on odds checker. Everybody's five to two and you're four to one. Are you wrong? Are you wrong or are all the others wrong? Difficult to, to, to say one way or another. OK, now I've had people like you in these interviews before. So far, none of them have been able to tell me how they do it. Okay. So can you see if you can tell me for, how you do it? For, for what specific? Well, tell me how you price up a greyhound race. Where, where would you start? And okay. I, I would get the runners, the advanced runners. With, with the dogs, you get the, the cards are made up by the racing office. So where, where are we tomorrow? We're Saturday tomorrow. Well, they, those runners came out yesterday. I've had a quick look through it. I probably won't price up that card. Um, the best example is probably um, a Thursday, Thursday meeting at, at Swindon. I'd get the runners on a Monday afternoon. I'd write them all out and I'd start looking. I'd look at the grade of the race. I'd look at the dogs, when did they last run? How many ran on the same day? So we're looking back how many ran on say the 2nd of February. We look down on, we've got the full form race card form, you will find certain dogs ran in the same race. Ah, there's three of them there ran in the same race, same grade. This was seven to four favourite, led, led to the running, got caught by this dog. You try and f I'd try and find a favourite and I'd put it in and I'd, think, and I'd look through, this is quite a tightly graded race. I might be 11 to four the field. I'd put it down. You've, if you've seen the, the sheets I write, you'll see all these pencil it's basically, I'm, I'm putting my thoughts down. So you'd see 11 to 4, it might end up 7 to 2. So I've got a price by every dog based on the trap draw, um, previous form, form in the grade, if it's a new dog or relatively new dog, 
all, all sorts of things get put into the melting pot. And I'd go through each race. Now I'd stop as long as I got a percentage. And this is where a lot of people would, they lose interest. They get baffled by maths and science. As long as I've ended up with a, an over round, so between 125 and 133, I would leave it. I'd move on to the next race. I'd go all through the card. Probably take me an hour, hour and a quarter, hour and a half to do 12 races. I would then leave it for, for, for some time. I would come back and look at it on a Tuesday. With those prices I've ended up, I'd put those prices as if that were the prices for the race, and I'd go through it again. And I would look, and I'd go through it again. I'd get the final confirmed runners from the track. There may be some alterations. A couple of dogs might get taken out, and you might have to reprice it. But basically, from that point, I'd end up at 127, 128, and that would be it. Am I happy with it? Yes put the final prices down and that would be that would be it um, there's an easy way I've, I've been asked quite a few times how many how would you do it if you imagine you've you've got a dice right so you've got one to six you've got six runners okay now if a bookmaker offered um, five to one each dog true odds of, of each number coming up it's not a hooky dice or anything as a punter you, if you had a, a, a series of bets, you might or might not win a few quid. As a bookmaker, you couldn't offer five to one each because you've got your overheads. We're sat in this lovely office and the staff are going to want pay in. You, you couldn't offer five to one each. If you offered four to one each, then all of a sudden you've, you've got a margin. So the easy way, if somebody wants to price up, have a go at pricing up a greyhound race, take your dice, the theory of the dice. Put every dog in at four to one on the on the race card and then look at it yourself and you'll say, hang on, this dog shouldn't be four to one, this should be a lot shorter. Now six fours are twenty-four, so four to one down the card. You've got to end up with twenty-four. So if you change one to three to one, that's three. Change one to two to one, that's two. You've got to push things out, you've got to push your number out a bit bigger. Work through as best you can, if you understand anything about greyhound form, people will to, to a certain degree, but you must end up at 24. Then leave it, go and look at another race and go and do another one. So do three races and then go back, which is the same as I do, go back and then have a recheck. And then in the morning when you get, the, well, you get the final runners, in the morning when you get the racing post, bloody hell, this thing I've got two to one six to one you'll have a look and that's the only way you can do it once you've seen a set of prices whether it be for uh, a horse race a football match a dog race it's very hard if you've seen a set of prices six to one or whatever you can't then put it in at 12 or you can't put it in at three because you've seen that price and it's in your mind so the only way you can do it is literally from, from a, 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 the bear form, as Shane, the, the, the one of the last ones I watched, he prices his horses up. And you've got to be comfortable that, that, that you're, you're pretty much right. You're going to make mistakes, yes, but in the long run, you're, you're more right than wrong. And that's, that's, the only way, that's the only way I can do it. And just quickly, if... So you price them up. If in the morning you say you've made something at six to one, the racing post may get twelve to one. Are you right? And they're wrong? Is that uh, what you think? It's very difficult to say. Very difficult. But to would say. you be confident to think they've made a rick there? Or would you think? No, I wouldn't say that. There? The difference between six to one and twelve to one. I wouldn't be looking to. If I if I had was looking to have a bet, I wouldn't be looking to back something I've made six to one, um, and it's twelve to one in the post. What I would be looking to possibly get involved with is something I've made seven to four, two to one that's seven to two, four to one in the racing post, which is what the, the, the guide that the main bookmakers use, I'd be looking to possibly back that six or seven to one, and we see.